Now to start our discussion regarding the subject integral calculus, let us first have some concepts about integration. Now, as you can see from the screen, integration is the inverse process of differentiation. So instead of finding the derivative, we're trying to find the antiderivative or what we call the primitive. So an antiderivative is a function f of x and we usually represent this as the capital F of x. Now an antiderivative is actually the answer to the process of integration. But if you try to add what we call the constant of integration, so we usually represent this as uh, this letter C here. So if you try to um, include this positive C or plus C at any antiderivative, then you might as well want to call this the indefinite integral. So basically what I want to say is that the families of the antiderivative is what we call the indefinite integral. Now let's discuss some of the parts of our integration or the integral expression. So if we have an expression, let's say the integral of f of x dx and then this is equal to the antiderivative which is usually represented as the capital f of x then some concept of integration then this is the general expression of the integral of f of x now let us try to um, label some of the parts here or the important parts that we know so this f of x is what we call the integrand so an, an integrand is the expression wherein that's the um, function that we want to find its antiderivative. And this dx or simply the x part here is what we call the variable of integration. So the variable of integration is an important part of our integral expression because in this case, we already know what is the infinitesimal change of that certain function and that is the basis of our um, integration process. Now uh, this one, this capital F of x, is what we call the antiderivative. Okay, And then of course, because that's the answer when you try to integrate this expression, and then this c is what we call the constant of integration. Okay, so knowing uh, these parts in an integral expression, the last one would be this symbol here. That is an elongated S. So it's not an L but an S. So that is an elongated S which kind of um, symbolizes the term summation. So it is roughly the summation. So why is it that it is called the summation? So bakit kaya natin siya tinatawag na summation? though this one is actually integration. Now, in general, um, integration or integral calculus talks about the area under the curve. So that's the basic concept of integration because unlike our differential calculus, when we try to define the derivatives, we're trying to actually find slope. Let's say there's a moving body and then uh, the speed function, the velocity function is given. So if you try to like find the derivative, then you're trying to find the acceleration so if it is the distance function itself then if you wanted to try to find the derivative then you're actually finding the speed now in cases of integration geometrically speaking we're always trying to find the area under a curve which of course is dependent on the limits of integration now if you want to um, add another some, I mean some of the parts another parts of I think the integral uh, integral expression here we can have here a and b which we can refer as the limits of integration so we can say that this a and b okay so we can actually um, put it right here and then these are the limits of integration now the limits of integration is either the lower limit and then the upper limit so if it's the lower limit then it is actually written at the lower portion of our integration symbol and then for our upper integration limit then that's of course written at the upper portion of our elongated s now um, what i was trying to say is that um, since this integral procedure is talking about the concept of integration in terms of area might as well want to express that in terms of area so if we have this 
um, Cartesian coordinate system where this is x and then this one's y. So we're just trying to um, give the geometric representation of this um, integration. And then I also have this um, function f of x. Okay. Now um, I'm much concerned with, for example, this is the value of your x which is actually equal to a and this one is your b. So this is b. So basically, I am talking about the area that is um, covered by this um, curve from, of course, A to B. Okay, so this is what I'm much concerned. Because if we don't have any limits of integration, then we're talking about that indefinite integral. But if we're talking about um, a certain value of the area wherein we're considering the limits of the integration, then we're talking about the definite integral. Now, going back to this figure, why is it called the summation of um, this expression? Now, if you try to look at this um, distance from the um, x-axis going to this curve, we could say that the distance is simply f of x. And in that way, if the height, um, let's just pick this rectangle here. So if, for example, this is the height of this certain rectangle and the height is simply f of x, and then this infinitesimal um, width, wherein that is actually the distance between two um, x values. Um, we actually don't know what is that certain value, but I'm strictly talking about this rectangle, which is actually thin. So we can say that that is the, um, the length of this rectangle. So that's typically um, the length itself. Now, if I wanted you to find the area of this rectangle, and because that is a rectangle, we could say that the area is simply h times l, which is in turn become, I mean, which in turn becomes f of x and then times dx. So that is true for this um, rectangle only. But how about if you try to like find the next rectangle and then of course the next rectangle. So it is kind of fixed that the height would be f of x. But if dx here, is any width that is something like um, consistent with all these rectangles and they are infinitely thin we could say therefore that we can just take the sum of all these infinitely small um, rectangles or thin rectangles and then add them all up that's why that's the very concept of having this elongated s meaning the summation so basically we're talking about this um, height times length which is actually a rectangle and then we're trying to find the sum of those thin rectangles under this certain group. That's why we have this expression as our um, integral or integral expression in general. Now let's move forward to the list of formulas that we have to remember as we deal with all of these um, integrands and all of the kind of functions that we might encounter in these um, future lessons. Okay, now let's start our discussion by understanding how these basic integration rules work it's just that we need to find the i mean we have this original integral and then we need to rewrite this in a way that we can actually find a fitting integrand and then integrate this and then simplify so you can see here a lot of different functions and basically these are the functions that are actually um, quite easy to remember Makita nyo dyan, meron tayong um, green, blue, and a lot of different colors just to emphasize that they are actually working on different types of um, kind of functions. Now, um, the first one here is all about algebraic functions. And as you can see here, we have here the integral of 0, which is a constant or C. And then we also have this um, something like a scalar function that's k dx and then basically the derivative is if you have a constant you just have to add this x plus c and then um, we have here what is the derivative of a function that is multiplied with a scalar so you just have to like um, separate k and then integrate f of x now we also have these functions wherein as you can see it's just separated by the arithmetic symbol plus or minus so it can be um, addition or subtraction so with this, um, you can say that if we have them, uh, we can just separate them individually in each term and then um, integrate them. 
Now for this one, this one of the most important thing that we have to remember, if we have um, a power function that's x to the n dx, the deriv I mean, I mean the antiderivative of that is simply taking the base which is x and then raising that to n plus one. In that way, if, for example, we have x cubed, so that becomes x to the fourth because we have to add one to um, the exponent, which is a three in, the, in that case. And then you have to divide that expression in terms of n plus one. So if you have x cubed, that becomes x to the fourth divided by four. And then don't forget to add um, plus c. Now, why is it that we have this restriction and it's not equal to negative one? Now, in a case-to-case -case basis, when this is um, x to the negative one, if you do this procedure, you'll be able to get an undefined answer, which is not um, integrable in cases like this. So that is the very restriction of this rule. But uh, if you uh, look at this exponential functions here, there there is this the integral of dx over x, which is basically the x raised to negative one, and then the de antiderivative of that is the natural logarithm of x plus c. I will not be discussing each of these um, rules or each of these equation. I am hoping that you've already memorized this, but if you don't. Or if you haven't, then uh, you might as well want to pause the video and try to at least uh, memorize uh, the most common of all of these functions. Now, the most common rules or functions that I'm talking about are these colored ones. Now, this, the ones in black, they're actually extension of those that are written here. So you might as well um, skip this, but uh, later on we'll be... Um, maybe utilizing this but um, you don't have to like memorize each of them because um, basically basically you can just derive all of these from uh, the colored expressions okay so with that being said um, I hope you already know this so um, let's use them in solving for what we call the feeding integrants or the, this one is the most basic of our integration procedures now, when we say that we have a feeding integrand, we're actually talking about kind of um, functions that look very easy to integrate and they just fit to the rules that are actually here. Now, let me have the first one here that is the integral of x cubed minus 7x to the fifth plus e to the 2x the x okay so based on the rules that we have already mentioned this um, three terms are actually separated by subtraction and then addition so we can just simply separate them so that we can actually see each of them as um, separate uh, integration procedure that we can apply so I'll be separating them so that makes this the integral of x cubed dx and then minus the integral of 7x to the fifth dx and then plus the integral of e to the 2x dx okay now that i've separated um, all of the expressions i can now simply integrate each of them but um, i have to make sure that each term is actually an a fitting integrand and i can apply a certain rule that that matches the um, expression so this one is x cubed and this is actually an x to the n rule so by that knowing this this one is x to the n where n is equal to 3 then therefore i can say that the antiderivative of this expression is x raised to n plus 1 which is 3 plus 1 and then divided by n plus 1 which is actually 3 plus 1 so that makes perfect sense in this first term now we move forward with the second one and then the second one as you can see here this looks like the k f of x dx where in this f of x that is left is this x to the n so we can actually um, rewrite this in terms of something like um, 7 the integral of x to the fifth dx so you can actually rewrite that in that case so if that is the case then this leaves us to the subtraction symbol because um, this one is the separating operation minus 7 times the integral of x to the fifth which is x to the sixth all over um, 6 okay so 
in that way I can now proceed with the last which is plus now this e to the x I mean e to the 2x we know very well that um, this is similar to the expression we're in we have to integrate e to the x which gives us e to the x and by doing that we know very well that if we try to integrate this expression if we try to have this you know e to the 2x we know very well that this results to the same expression then multiplied to 2 so what do you have to do to be able to get this e to the 2x so in that way i need to divide this expression so that i can uh, get this e to the 2x so with that knowing this expression we can actually um, divide this expression to one half so that we'll be able to obtain e to the 2x as the um, answer to this antiderivative so that means this one is one half e raised to 2x and you can always check that by simply differentiating your answer so if you differentiate this this that becomes e to the 2x times 2 which cancels out 2 which leaves this e to the 2x as our answer and now you can actually simplify this after adding the constant of integration so this way the answer here or the antiderivative of this expression is equal to x to the fourth i actually um write uh, row three plus one here just to emphasize that it is something like um a power rule so this is the last time i'll be doing this so the next uh, time you'll be encountering a power rule so i'll be i'll just be directing to this kind of solution so that is x to the fourth over four and then minus that is 7 over 6 x to the 6 okay and then plus 1 half e to the 2x and then plus c so this is the answer to our um to this integral or for number one expression okay so you can always check that uh, let us check the answer by taking the derivative so in this case the derivative of this expression is 4 times x cubed and then of course this 1 fourth you can factor them out okay and then um, we have the 7 over 6 x to the 6 so that is um, minus 7 over 6 times 6 x to the fifth okay and then plus 1 half e to the 2x and then times 2 so this whole expression is multiplied with dx so that cancels out this 4 and 1 fourth 6 and then this 2 that's why we're left with x cubed minus 7 x to the fifth plus e to the 2x so that makes our answer correct now let's move forward with number two so what we have here is this 5 divided by the square root of x plus 5 over x minus x raised to n minus 1 now the first one if we try to um, express this um, square root of x in terms of x raised to negative one half then that makes the equation simpler so that becomes five and then x raised to negative one half but um, if you try to do that in this five over x we know very well that that doesn't matter because x is raised to negative one which in that case um, it deviates from the power rule so we will just leave it as something like this so that's plus five over x and then this one will just leave it like that okay so rewriting this expression makes it a lot simpler and now we can proceed with integration so i'll be integrating the first term here now if we try to integrate that let me just change the color just to emphasize that i'm starting the solution now so this one is also a power rule now this one is a scalar so you can just um, copy this and then proceed with integration of this x raised to negative one half which applies the power rule itself so we have x raised to negative one half plus one so that makes this positive one half then divided by of course positive one half okay and then you have this 5 over x which in this case we can actually rewrite this as 5 times 1 over x dx and this makes perfect sense when you try to look at this dx over x which gives you the antiderivative which is actually the natural logarithm of x in that way we can say that this is 5 just copy the constant here and then times the natural logarithm of x okay 
Now this uh, last expression here is something like a power rule itself. So we just have to apply the integration of um, a power function. So with this, we have minus x raised to n minus 1 plus 1. So that's n minus 1 plus 1. And then we just have to add this. Um, I mean, we just have to divide this expression to the whole exponent. So that's n minus 1 plus 1. Okay. So with this, um, we can just add the constant of integration. And simplifying this will lead us to the final answer. So this makes it... I mean this makes it so this makes it 10 x raised to one half and then we have plus 5 ln of x and then finally the last term will be minus x raised to n all over n okay and then plus c now for such expression wherein there are some letters that are involved and of course, it's different from the variable of integration. We can expect that this assumes a constant value in the expression. That's why it asks something like a constant as well. So in this case, the answer here is 10 x raised to 1 half plus 5 ln of x minus x raised to n all over n plus c. Now your answer should always have this constant of integration because remember, if it doesn't have any, then you're just talking about an antiderivative not the not the integral or not the antiderivative itself so this is very important because it can assume a lot of values uh, real value numbers like um, 1 2 3 4 negative 5 negative 7 so those are actually solutions to this uh, equation or um, examples of an antiderivative so with that knowledge we can we need to actually incorporate plus c here so that um, we can cover up all the possible answers for such kind of expression now for this problem because it doesn't have any fitting integrand by just you know by just looking at that expression we need to actually rewrite this in a way that we can find a fitting integrand so i'll be expanding this x squared plus one and then i'll just leave this uh, last term as it is if it is easier to expand then you can actually expand it just to um, simplify the process of solving so with this we have x to the fourth so the integral of i mean x to the fourth i guess and then plus 2x squared plus 1 and then we have here the last term that is plus 3 over x minus z okay so that makes this our um, final um, integrand and i think that's a lot easier than the previous one so we can now uh, deal with the solution here now uh, we can integrate each of them, each of the terms. So this one is a power rule. So we have x to the fifth over five, okay? And then the second term would be plus um, copy two, and then multiply this with the derivative of x squared. So that x, that's x cubed over three. And then you just have to integrate one, that's a constant. So you just have to um, like copy the constant and then multiply it with um, x. If it's 4, then that's 4 times x. Okay, And then finally, how about this um, expression that is 3 over x minus 7? Now remember, um, this, uh, this one is an extension of the natural logarithm expression wherein we have this something like dx over x. And basically, if this becomes something like this form, dx over x minus a, where of course a is a constant, then the derivative of this expression is simply the ln or the natural logarithm of x minus a. Okay, so that is, of course, plus c. So that is simply the extension of the natural logarithm of a certain function that is, uh, you know, um, expressed in this kind of function. So with that being said, the answer here should be plus, you just have to copy the um, constant here, so that's 3 times the derivative of dx over x, I mean the antiderivative of dx over x minus 7 becomes ln of x minus 7. And you have to make sure that uh, this one is actually positive because if it's negative here then um, we have to take this negative x minus 7 and then we need to incorporate the negative sign in front of this because that is what happens when um, we have a variable that is actually negative in this procedure. And then you add um, positive c. Okay, so rewriting all of this, we have x to the fifth over 5, and then plus 2 thirds 
x cubed and then we have plus x plus 3 ln of x minus 7 plus c okay so this gives us our final answer for this certain problem and remember um in this certain problem we solve this extension of the natural logarithm expression you can always check on your answer if you wanted to um, check on that you can always differentiate it so let's try checking uh, this expression so if we have x to the fifth over 5 so just copy 1 fifth and then the derivative of x to the fifth would be 5 x to the fourth and then I'll be proceeding with all of this so that's plus 2 thirds and then I think that's 3x squared then plus 1 then plus um, 3 times 1 over x minus 7 okay then of course that's dx and then this makes this x to the fourth and then plus 2x squared and then plus 1 plus 3 over x minus 7 now this um, three terms here simplifies to x squared plus 1 quantity squared so that makes our answer correct okay now let's proceed with letter D so we have the integral of 3 over x squared plus 4 dx okay now if you if you notice this kind of expression if you go back to the rules you can see that this is something like um, an expression wherein we have dx over something like x squared plus a squared something like this okay so um, if this is the expression then we know quite well that this results to something like um, an inverse trigonometric function so with that being said if you go back to your handout we can say that this one is actually um, an inverse um, tangent function but um, if you go back to your handout you might be seeing that um, the inverse tangent function looks something like this that's um, dx over x squared plus um, a squared and then uh, the derivative or the other derivative of that is 1 over a tangent inverse of x over a plus c so that is plus or minus it depends upon the sign of our of your um, dx here so let's apply that concept in our solution so that makes this um, equal to um, we'll be separating 3 from this expression I mean um, we'll just factor out 3 here so that's 3 times the integral of dx over x squared plus 4 just to follow the rules that is actually I mean the rules that the rule that is actually stated in their handout so this makes this um, 3 times dx over x squared plus something like 2 squared now from this we know very well that a is actually 2 and of course this one is your variable of integration so knowing this it says in your rule that the antiderivative of this kind of expression is actually equal to um, you have to copy this constant because that's actually the constant that we tried to plug out of our equation but uh, it's not actually really removing that constant it's just that we will be multiplying that later on so that's uh, three times now you differentiate I mean you integrate this expression based on the rules of, uh, of inverse trigonometric function so that makes this 1 over a so that is 1 over 2 um, remember this one is positive it could be negative if and only if this one is negative so that is one half and then the inverse tangent of u over a and in this case u is actually equal to x because that's our variable here so that makes this x over 2 plus c and then the answer for this um, problem is 3 halves the inverse tangent of x over 2 and then plus c so this is our answer okay now if you try to check this using differentiation then we might as well want to use another color here so i'll be differentiating this expression so what we have here is copying the constant first and then differentiating the inverse tangent of x over 2 so that makes is that makes it um, 1 over 
x over 2 squared plus 1 and then the derivative of x over 2 is simply 1 half and we add something like the x now for this case um, we can proceed with simplifying so what we have here is 3 halves times 1 over x squared plus 4 all over 4 and then times 1 half okay so in this case I can also rewrite this certain expression in terms of 4 over x squared plus 4 which turns out to be canceling this um, 2 at the denominator so with this expression it turns out that this one is 3 over x squared plus 4 and then the x so this is actually a correct answer because we've arrived at the same problem or a same integrand here okay so I hope that is um, a clear explanation for this problem.